Hey guys, Desler Magic here, and it's time to finish up chapter three of the awesome Dominaria storyline. Now, I've never been a huge fan of the whole jump around to different viewpoints thing, but it does kind of lend itself to a Wizards of the Coast, you know, magic storyline, um, and honestly, a lot's going on in Dominaria. It's kind of more of like a television format, if you think about it, but uh, it does work. I'm sure they're all going to meet up at some point, and uh, that'll be the grand finale, and then Bola shows up. Well, anyway, in the first half, uh, Joyra raised up the uh, sunken under the sea weatherlight, or I should say what's left of it, and she brought in all kinds of specialists and craftsmen and mechanics and just everybody. So they're going to use a special sacred seed or something to um, regrow like another hull around it because that was completely destroyed. Uh, they woke up the power stone and they're just about ready to go. So pretty awesome. By the way, if anybody knows how or why the ship crashed in the first place, I'd love to hear that. I'm not sure that was ever actually explained. So Joyra left Tiana in charge of the project, which is a wonderful idea for sure. And then she went to go search out a very particular person that she wanted on her crew. Uh, I was going to say we don't know her name yet. Her name's Shauna. Shauna Sisse. Apparently it's Sisse's daughter, granddaughter, or something like that. I don't know. The time is a little hard to get together. But very conveniently for the progression of the plot and the setting up of the exposition, um, she saw her uh, fighting a whole bunch of cultists that were spying on the marketplace and trying to steal maps. And wouldn't you know it, she's got a shield around her that makes her indestructible, at least to magic. It could be to everything, but I th she might be like the opposite of Gideon, where like I think Gideon can get hit by magic, but not physical stuff. That's actually interesting. I wonder, I, I don't think Gideon's ever gotten hit by a spell. Well, not that I've read at least, but uh, yeah, they both got a glowing golden shield around them, so that's cool. So Jorga goes up to her after the fight, and she's like, hey, uh, person who I maybe know. And then Shauna's like, hey, what up, Pam? And she's like, hey, did you explain the whole situation to the guards? Because by the way, the guards are kind of pissed that she's just like fighting in the middle of the marketplace and scaring people. But honestly, the cultists kind of started, and she explained it to them. But Shauna's like, yeah, we got to get up out here because uh, it's just like the dude behind her just like drops the maddest, sickest beat you ever heard. And she's just like, well, I got to run because they won't stand with me because I've never been a pundit. I'm no Hannity and I never towed guns like up Yosemite because I got to bring the fun for the whole family. And Jorah's like, what? And she's like, Jorah, the same complicated. She turns around to the dude like beatboxing behind her. She's like, back the tape up, even though he's, you know, he's beatboxing. It doesn't even make sense. And she's like, all right, all right, here we go. Uh, give me some more vocal effects. Pump up the bass. Let's do this right. <laughs> And then Jordan's just like, you lost me. I don't understand your dialect. Now, I mean, I gotta say, like, I'm not gonna say it's racist that they made Shauna a rapper, but, you know, does it really need to be said? Also, none of that happened, but I had just enough caffeine to get, like, really weird with this story. So, if, we're going to a weird place today. I mean, I woke up pretty early this morning for no apparent reason. I was just, like, dead. So, I went and got this new thing called a triple shot espresso. They make that now. I mean, the motto in the can should be, like, I want to get racked in the least amount of time possible. I don't have time to drink 20 ounces of coffee, two mugs. Screw that. Five ounces. I want to down that crap. And I want to start dancing and singing show tunes on the roof. And then doing really, really bad Planeswalker rap covers. By the way, free daps, cinnamon, look it up, it's awesome. But what you didn't know is that it actually ties in because in Dominaria, this whole war, this whole bells and lock crap with the cult and all that and the cabal, it's all over cinnamon. That's right, they're, they're working the spice mines and they're mining that cinnamon and the whole economy revolves around cinnamon. So naturally, Shana rolls into town and she's just like, call me MC Cormac and I'm not in a bad mood. I love cinnamon as much as anybody in the world, but I'd want to have it all in my fast food. But then they were like, um, we don't use it for that. We use it to power our spaceships. And she's like, oh. Thought I tasted some cinnamon in that burger. Guys, I didn't want to be a YouTuber. I wanted to be a rapper. Just kidding. Literally for $2 in Patreon, I will never rap again. Like, what the hell actually happened in this damn story? Okay, she goes, I'm Joyra. I came here to find you. It says they retreated to a wine bar, okay, on a lower level and sat on the carpets. They took their shoes off. By the way, I'm pretty sure they said it's like the afternoon. I mean, it's five o'clock somewhere, but come on. Oh, so this isn't creepy at all. Shauna goes, how did you find me? And Joyra goes, I've kept track of your family. <laughs> By the way, special message to somebody out there who already knows who I'm talking to. I'm keeping track of your family, too. If you keep pissing me off and threatening me, well, hey, everybody loves Mad Libs. You fill in the ending. But seriously, I already know where you live. But anyway, back in the slightly less violent plane of Dominaria, uh, she says, yeah, one of your cousins told me that you were in the city, uh, and they said they miss you. That's weird. Uh, it turns out she was actually tracking the Cabal spies for a while and then, you know, followed them to the marketplace. It was like, oh, they're trying to steal, you know, maps and stuff so that they could ambush the trade caravans that uh, feed into the market. Pretty clever, actually. So Shanna's explanation, which might make sense to some of you, is, oh yeah, I miss my family, but all my life I've heard about my ancestors and tales of lost Zalfir. Isn't it on the map? Um, I got tired of living under the shadows of my past and decided to make use of my inheritance. 
10 bucks says she bought a like special belt that gives her the magic golden shield. And I bet it looks like a WWE championship belt. Because honestly, the one from D&D 4th edition like totally does. The belt of shielding. So Jordan was like, fantastic. You want to do a bunch of cool crap that people talk about for like centuries afterwards because your ancestors are way cooler than you? Want to join on the Weatherlight crew? And so Shana just laughed. She's like, oh, well, if it still existed, I'd consider it. <laughs> and Jordan was like, bitch, I got news. She's like Oprah level excited about putting together this crew. So seriously, Shana's just like, yeah, I'd, I'd consider it an honor to like follow in the footsteps of my ancestor, blah, 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 if it still existed. And Jordan was like, <laughs> that sounds like it would be contractually binding. Welcome to my crew. And so Jordan looks around to all the alcoholics around. She's like, y'all heard it. Y'all witnessed it. She said it. So it says they uh, jumped on her bark. Still, I should just look it up. Oh, it's a sailing ship, typically with three masts, in which the foremast and mainmast are square-rigged, and the mizzenmast, that's a real word, is rigged fore and aft. So in other words, it's a boat. I kind of gathered that. So they jumped on Joyra's Barkmobile. You know, they never said the name of it, but they also never said it wasn't called the Bob Barker. Oh, you know what I'm calling it for the rest of the story. So they sailed the Bob Barker to Eroda, specifically Banal... God, I always screw that up! GMC Denali City. It's where they make the SUVs. Very, very industrial. Very rich. So uh, Joyra on the way there, she became even more confident that she had made the right choice because though it wasn't Sisse reborn, she was enough like her that uh, it was almost painful for her to have her there because, you know, she reminded her of her. I assume Sisse's dad. I mean, I don't, I don't know if they said that or not. Oh, and so when they uh, got really, really close to the port at Benalia City. Okay, fine. I'll call it what it actually is. The ship's alarm started going off and it sounded like this. You smell that? And that makes sense because uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Dominaria lore, but in the fourth book, uh, they had stated very clearly that Benalia City was the nexus for trade of cinnamon, of course, the most important asset on Dominaria. It was actually adjacent to three different major spice mines. So the story narration just like blurts it right out. They're just like, oh, Joyer hopes that she has the same success with Danatha Capuchin. I don't know who that is, but hey. It says she was a distant relative to Captain Gerard. So, okay, all I know is, like, his sword is what the weatherlight looks like, apparently, or whatever. She's just going to get all the family members who are, like, almost as good as the original crew after they all, like, got killed or something. That is, like, super dark, super weird, and I think Joyra might be a serial killer. Okay, get this. I gotta read this exactly as it's written, because it's actually pretty funny. I mean, you know, Martha knows what she's doing when it comes to writing. Okay, she was expecting the same success with Danatha Capuchin, who was distantly related to Captain Gerard, but Danatha's answer was short and final. No, she said. Yes. Short and final indeed. And then she blasted a cloud of blinding cinnamon into their eyes because she was actually in the middle of doing the cinnamon challenge. It's been a long-standing tradition that if you can complete the cinnamon challenge without coughing up a giant cloud of cinnamon and being you know, rushed to the hospital, um, you get to be the mayor of uh, Benalia City for a week. And uh, yeah, Capuchin was like, that's my jam, I'm gonna do it. And if at this point you're thinking this has got to be Desolator's least accurate version of the lore, you are way wrong. You clearly have not seen the lore video for Shadows Over Innistrad. All I'm going to say is I made it before the stories came out. And Jace puts on an astronaut suit and blasts off into space. Get it? Eldritch Moon? It's just don't watch the video. It's terrible. In fact, don't watch this video. Like, why are you even still here at this point? I swear, I will do a cover of the entire song until you leave. So anyway, they were sitting discussing it in the garden of the Capuchin townhouse, and it was late morning on a fine warm day. If you ask me, it sounds like a lovely day to go crash the weatherlight into a mountain or whatever the hell they did. And so, of course, Joy was like, no. Do you think I'm lying about who I am? But Danith was like, no, I believe you're Joyra. It's just, like, she won't stop rapping. And, like, I don't want to be stuck on a ship with her if she, just everything she says is in rap lyrics. And so Shauna's like, oh, no, you didn't. Now I'm ticked off. Got a top ten list. I'm going to check that list off quicker than quick draw, mick draw with a pistol. And so Joyra's like, whoa, 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 no need for violence. And I could have sworn that when I met you, you just said you don't tote guns like you're Yosemite because you got to bring the fun for the whole family. Capish and his family. So Shauna's just like, oh, my God, fine. Everyone's a critic. Jeez. So, you know, Joy was not having this because they, they sailed all the way to, you know, the, the spice capital of the world here. You could literally taste the cinnamon in the air. So Joy was like, okay, the, what's the real reason? I mean, you're not afraid of a fight, are you? Are you getting a bit of a serial killer vibe from Joy yet? It says she had depended on having relatives of the two most famous weatherlight captains aboard. It had felt like the best way to begin new voyages. And after meeting Shana, she was certain she was right. She needed a capuchin. Um, or instead of just hiring the relatives of your dead friends to, like, replace them, because that's, that's just not weird at all. I'm never going to get over that. You could just hire whoever's the most qualified for whatever job you're giving them. 
But then again, when has Wizards of the Coast or any of their friends or employees or contractors ever hired the person most qualified for the job? Might as well call him Weatherlight of the Coast. But Joyra's still at it. She's like, hey, you're a knight of Denalia or Benalia or wherever the hell we are. Got a proposition for you, okay? The Weatherlight has always been the center of battle, and it's time to use it to fight the Cabal to break their hold in Dominaria, so serving with us can only help Benalia. See? See the logic there? You see it? You follow? But Danitha just replies with, well, yeah, in the long run. Right here, right now, the Cabal is attacking outlying towns and villages around Benalia, so, you know, kind of my job. So, you know, if I jumped on your ship, I'd be fighting the Cabal halfway across the world, but if I fight them here, then I'm fighting them in my home. So Joyra just says, I understand, and it says she really couldn't argue with that point. I mean, what would you possibly say? No, your your town isn't important. <laughs> you, sh you should go fight the Cabal elsewhere. So then Danith is like, hey, I gotta go return to my command. Stay here as long as you want. You're both always welcome. So as soon as Danith walks away, Shadow walks up and she's like, she a bitch, let's trash this joint. But then Joyra's like, nah, not really feeling it today. Too much energy. So Shana's like, oh my god, fine. Did you have anybody else in mind? And uh, Joyra just says, no. Did anybody else totally not see that coming? I thought she was going to go pick up, like, five more people. I mean, I don't know, like, the history of, like, the Weatherlight and its captain and crew and all that crap, but, like, damn. I mean, didn't she at least say she knew where Teferi was? Like, isn't he, like, for sure on the roster? So, yeah, for real, Joy was just like, oh, no, she was the only other one I hoped to, and then, boom, cuts her off. Okay, uh, it says a young man lurched out of the house, stared at them wide-eyed, and hurried over the table. He gasped, what about me? Oh my god, you guys, you know what every Treasure Island ripoff clone thing needs for an, a, an awesome adventure? Comedy, relief, little kid. Okay, don't know if that's what they meant by young man, but holy crap, would it be funny if he was like 10? Oh, and you have to be like really fat, like get like a Goonies thing going on. Dude, just think about every movie with like a fat kid in it. Automatically better. I mean, even it was better with a comedy relief fat kid, even though the hypochondriac was like way better. So to his what about me, Shanna replied, what about you? And George was just like, boy, he looks an awful lot like Danitha. Oh my god, I hope his name is Manatha. Manatha, the morbidly obese 11 year old weatherlight pirate. Hell, give him a hook hand. Why the hell not? By the way, anybody notice that Danatha had like the most like lesbian haircut ever and her name in short would be Dan? I'm just saying. Like, literally, the narrator of the story is like covering for her, okay? And I quote, her hair was pulled back, the sides shaved to better fit under a helmet. Mm hmm, yeah, mm hmm, yeah, mm hmm. Yeah, that must be it. Uh, so Libro here says, uh, I'm a Capuchin. I'm Raff. Oh my God, I wish his name was Jaff because then I could say, my name's Jaff. That meme will never die. And if it does, I will resurrect it personally. You know why? Because my name's Jeff. So anyway, he says, yeah, I heard everything. You know, little brother's always fine, duh. I want to go in my sister's place. And Joy Rose just like folds arms. She's like, oh, do you now? Do you? Do you really? Do, do you really? Oh, here comes Shauna says, how old are you? And he just replies, my name's Jeff. Just kidding. It's not. We all wish it was, but it's not. Uh, he just simply replies with, I'm old enough to be a trained mage. I passed every exam years early and astonished my teachers with my ability. Oh, God, it's a genius kid. Oh, those are just annoying. I didn't see the latest wrinkle in time, but I saw the really shitty one. And oh, my God, was whatever the hell Wallace, whatever the hell his name was. Holy crap, was he annoying. Come on, guys. We just went from comic relief fat kid to like bookworm nerdy kid that's going to annoy everybody and just use cringy humor. Come on. And so Shauna, because she's a bitch, says, so they're training mages at 12 now or 13? So Raph just jumps off the table, just kicks her right in the face. Just kidding. See, that would have been the job of the comic relief little kid. No, that's not who this is. This is a completely different stereotypical archetype trope. So he just replies, Joda of Tolaria himself said I was one of the most accomplished students he's ever seen. So then it says, up to this point, Joyra had been a little amused, but she drew the line at that and said, Joda did not say that. Oh, if this was me and it was true, which, I mean, I was pretty smart as a kid. I would have blown her head off with a fireball just to prove it. This is a bit of a strange line, but it says, Raph tried to brazen it out. I don't think that's correct use of that word. But a line of worry appeared on his brows. Or between his, whatever. Oh, do you know Joda? He asked. And Joyra says, yes. <laughs> From before the Phyrexian invasion. I guess it just sounds like something he wouldn't say. I mean, then again, she didn't even know who this is. I mean, like, I, I don't know why she's not believing him. And Shana's like, if you're such a great mage, summon a freaking dinosaur right now. T-Rex. I want a T-Rex in your backyard right now. But Raf just ignores it. He says, oh, my sister said that you were Joyra, but, uh, uh, okay. All right, Joda didn't really say that, but I'm still an incredibly accomplished mage. I guarantee you one of his accomplishments is like a speed run at, like, Undertale or something. Maybe a zero-death Minecraft run? 
Oh, here we go. You saw it coming as much as I did. Joyra shook her head and turned away, but as she and Shauna moved toward the house, Joyra sensed magic. Oh, somebody's about to get blasted. And I mean, like, drinking a triple shot espresso at 9 a.m. blasted, okay? I haven't even recovered yet, and it's been like 12 hours. You're like, wait, nine, 14 hours. Well, he must not be like Jace level because it says Raph was lucky she realized it was just an illusion and not an attack, which means that she immediately knew it was an illusion. I mean, how high could Joyra's will saves really be? I mean, what did she roll a 20? I mean, I doubt it. She sure as hell ain't lucky so far, am I right? But seriously though, he went all out on this one. I could see why this would be very convincing. The garden had vanished and she and Shauna were suddenly standing high in the air, uh, drifts of clouds around them. Yeah, that doesn't really tend to happen very often on a daily basis. Oh, and also, I think, like, group teleport is, like, a tier 8 spell. Like, come on. I mean, the kid's, like, 13. And, dude, they're getting, like, rude, though. They're, like, tearing this kid's crappy magic apart. So, Joy returns to Shauna and says, hey, can you see this, too? And she's like, well, I can tell it's there, but I can also see the house and garden through it. So, is he any good? Uh, Shauna asks Joyra. Okay, so the story didn't overtly state this, but if you read between the lines, um, Shauna has a giant golden shield that prevents magic from working on her. So... That's probably why she asked, hey, can you see this? You may also remember that in the previous section of the chapter, they said that uh, the cultists, the clerics, were using dementia magic to cast illusions that were scaring everybody out of like the marketplace, but they didn't work on Shauna. They had no effect on her. So I just assumed she was disbelieving them or something, but I think it's because she had a big old golden shield. So like I said, for Shauna to see anything from the spell, that's interesting. Oh, what the hell? I say, Hiram, go down to the city hall and have his parents sign a work permit and then use him as legal child labor. Okay, here's what I don't get. Joyra sighed and made herself evaluate Raph's skills more objectively. He's not bad, she admits. She turned to Raph and says, you've been very annoying today. Okay, they literally said, like, two things to each other. I don't think he had time to be annoying. Like, she's acting like they went on a whole, like, thing today. Like, they've been talking for, like, 15 seconds. Like, I don't really get that. Oh, my God, this is so funny. So, Raph, Raph makes the illusion go away, and it says, I won't be annoying anymore. I'll be helpful. Okay, who's ever heard a little brother say that? And who's ever found it to be true? By the way, I'm the little brother, and uh, no, it never was. In fact, usually I assured them I would keep being annoying. So he assures her, I'll be very helpful. I'm sorry for lying. I just really, really want to go with you. That is a direct quote, by the way. Okay, wouldn't he logically want to stay around and study more magic? Okay, so Joyra considered it seriously. Uh, the problem was, you know, Danitha obviously had no intention of changing her mind, which left Raph as the only option in her mind. I feel I should interject. It would basically be kidnapping at this point. The laws on the books were very clear, even going back to the very first Cinnamon Council. <laughs> Can't move out of the house till you're 16 without parental permission. So uh, they, they just say, give us a moment. They walk over like under the tree to have a little private council. Once again, got to interject here. You can't just take your plan for a, for an adventuring party and just be like, well, let's just drop the warrior knight and get a mage. You know what happens when like your party's like, I want to be a wizard. Well, I want to be a sorcerer. Ooh, magic is gone. I'm going to be a wizard too. Let's all be a wizard. You all die. But I, also, I gotta say, Shauna's kind of already, like, the warrior. Like, she, at most, she's the tank. At, at least, she's the striker. You know what I mean? So, Jairus says, okay, honestly, what do you think? And Shauna replies, well, I think I have scars older than that child. I mean, if you insist on bringing him along, maybe he could be, like, the ship janitor, I guess? And then Jorah's like, Do you know who's a janitor where we come from? A, a, a robot? Nobody! Because in a battle of survival, no one gives a dick about clean floors! She is really high strung about this, I've gotta recruit my dead friend's family thing. I mean, at this point, like, are we all on the same page here? She must need their blood or something for some weird, like, necromantic ritual or so. She's gonna try and, like, bring them back from the dead or something. Who the hell wants some kid in his crappy illusions on your damn ship? Seriously. How about just sleep until, like, 11 and eat all the food, for God's sake? So Joyra just, just straight out says, but would you object to serving with him? And Shauna's like, well, I mean, he's eager enough and his heart is certainly in it and he seems to have the skills, but I mean, this would be really dangerous and I'm not sure he understands that. Okay, wizards like bare minimum 16 intelligence. I mean, I think literally you have to be 14 to be a wizard class. Oh, but his wisdom might be like eight though. But then Jorah says, well, we're already basically kidnapping him because it's got to be illegal to just like take a kid from his house and just like make him work on your ship. So why don't we also use him as a human shield and just put him on the front line in any battle? And uh, Shauna thinks about it. And she's like, yeah, I mean, especially if we're, we're down a night because what's her tits ain't coming. But Jorah actually comes up with a very interesting point. She says, there is no safety while the Cabal exists. He could just as well die here fighting them as anywhere else. 
which is probably not true because his sister, you know, yeah. So Shauna just says, that's true. I'm happy to serve with him if you think he'll be useful. So Jorah just nodded and she turned to Raph and said, okay, if you want to come, pack hurriedly because we have a long way to travel. And then as soon as he bolts off, she's like, let's raid the fridge. And then we get one of those little divider chapter things. And then it starts with, it was the morning when the Bob Barker sailed to the Bogarden Cove. I don't know where or what that is. Oh, let's see if I can put two and two together. Uh, she was using her scope, but now she could see it with her eyes. The hull was gracefully carved. The stern mast angled backward. The railings and glass of the ports gleamed brightly. It's the weather light. I guess that's where they left it. I just totally forgot. At least she remembered where it was, or that would have been a really short story. Oh, crap. Where did we tow that to again? There's like so many islands on this freaking map. Oh, well. End of chapter. End of storyline. Joyra grinned in delight. Everything had come together just as she had planned and right on time. That sucks. Now she's probably gonna have to pay him what she actually owes him. You know, now that they have an illusion master on board, they could probably, like, gut out the uh, Oculus Rift, like, VR gaming room on the ship and probably replace it with something else. Oh, they could do, like, like a humidor, you know, like for cigars, except, like, for jerky. I mean, they basically got, like, the portable holodeck kit, so they might as well just, you know, order, like, 37 pounds of jerky on Amazon. I, for one, wouldn't even step foot on that ship unless there was minimum five pounds of jerky. I mean, we'd be flying through the air and I'd be like, did somebody eat the last bag of jerky? And the joyer would be like, yeah. I'd be like, well, bye, right over the side of the ship. I mean, there's no reason to live anymore if there's no jerky. Well, this is a bit of a coincidence. Uh, when Raph sees it, it says he tried not to bounce with excitement. Okay, this kid's like 10, my God. And then he says, there's an angel. Is that Tiana? Does everybody just know Tiana? Is she, is she like some kind of like, like J-pop singer or something where like everybody on the planet knows her? Part-time Angel, part-time J-pop. That's right. She did like a Gangnam style remix, but it's actually Angel style. And then he asked, why does she have a vampire with her? That's uh, news to me. And then Joyra and Shana turned to stare at the figures waiting on the beach and says, wait, a what? Like, apparently that's news to her too. And then they state her plan hadn't included that. You know, I would just, just to be safe, sunburst. I know it's tier seven, but maybe Raph knows it. If the vampire fails a constitution save, I believe maybe we'll save one of the two. Boom, vaporized. I freaking love that spell. So it says, as they waded through the waves and up to the sandy flat, Tiana and the vampire came to meet them. I told you what would happen if you left Tiana in charge. She'd hire a vampire. I'm surprised the ship's not on fire, to be perfectly honest. Well, this is actually interesting. So Jorah says, hello, Tiana. I take it everything's going well. And she nodded to the vampire, who was clearly a vampire, except he was dressed as a knight of Benalia, and no one seemed to be wary of him for some reason. And then, oh my gosh, she actually says to Tiana, is there anything you'd like to tell me? Tiana tucked her wings in and scratched her head and replied, oh, well, yes, this is Arvad. Okay, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I remember making fun of the name Arvad, but I don't actually remember who it is. I believe my exact words were, are you sure he doesn't hate his parents because they named him Arvad? I legit do not remember anything else. He might be with the Cabal. He might have been at the fight at the house. I do not remember. So out of nowhere, Arvad drops to his knees and offered Joyra the pommel of his sword. I swear to serve at your side, Captain Joyra. He seemed perfectly sincere. But was he wearing face glitter, though? Like, what type of vampire are we talking? Are we talking Twilight or are we talking, like, Buffy? Okay, I got curious and checked. His name didn't occur anywhere in the story, but he was in the spoiler list. Oh, uh, and the card was Arvad the Cursed. I'm like, huh, wasn't he cursed and his parents named him that? <laughs> By the way, five mana, white-black hybrid, uh, death touch lifelink, 3-3, three, three, and other legendary creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Yeah, he can be expensive. So Jorio's just like, okay, that's kind of random. I see. And Tiana just says, it's a long story. It's a short story. You left Tiana in charge. That's really the story. Oh, guess what, everybody? We've got a guest star to finish up this chapter. This is like, you know, they always do like almost like a cliffhanger ending, but not really. It's not really a cliffhanger. It's just like an amazing revelation. It's more of a commercial break kind of thing. Oh, you get this. Ready for this? You're going to have to buckle up once again. I got to warn you guys once in a while when you got to buckle up for these. You got to buckle up for this one. You ready for this? Oh, you maybe unbuckle like a little bit. It's not nickel bolus. Joker says, uh, okay, so I'm not sure we have time for this now. I'm expecting a boom and then rush of wind, golden light. It's a Johnny Goldman. He appeared on the shore, looked up at the weather light with a big old smile, and Joker continues, a friend to arrive. Now we are ready. Okay, gotta point it out once again. Good thing they've got a wizard because literally three warrior classes. Are you kidding me? Who puts together an adventuring party like that? I mean... I guess Joyra could be the mage or something, because like she seems to have the ability to assess magic, and I don't know, she's wearing robes, I guess. 
Honestly, I don't remember that much about her. Uh, I think she like went to and then taught at Tolarian or something. I don't know. Well, Ajani could be like the paladin. I mean, because I think he can heal people. Like he knows like white mana crap, right? So we've got paladin, warrior, mage, and wizard. There's sorcer sorcerer. Well, let me think. Who does no wizards do illusions? I don't know. So far, that kid's all charisma. Let's let's go. Let's go sorcerer. Oh, you know what they need for a ship? A ranger. A power ranger. No, just kidding. Just regular ranger. I mean, know a planeswalker that's good with a bow? Maybe Garuk? Does he do stuff with a bow or does he just have an axe? You know, just bring Tybalt because at this point, why the hell not? So what do you guys think about the storyline so far? What do you think is going to happen? Um, I mean, obviously, oh, they're all going to get on the weather light and go like beat up the cabal like duh but it is fairly certain from the spoilers that nickel bolus will show up to this plane eventually but then again didn't a card from aether revolt reference nickel bolus and then he wasn't actually like on the plane just tezzeret was or something it was just like a teaser of the next one so i don't know i guess we'll see so thanks for watching and i will see you guys next video that's skibbity bibbity Cinnamon That makes no sense Cinnamon Everybody's coming around for Cinnamon Why are you, why are you still saying that? Cinnamon Knick-knack, paddywhack, no. give it all your Cinnamon It doesn't mean anything Cinnamon